and then ask Warp AI how to do something. So for example, how do I undo the most recent commits in Git? Whether you're a developer, sysadmin, or just looking to optimize your Mac experience, join me as I break down the top five terminal emulators for Mac. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jeremy, and this channel is all about helping you to become a better developer with the latest tools and techniques. All right, let's get started. Up first on our list is ZOC. This terminal emulator is geared towards advanced users and has a customizable interface. When you first open the terminal up, you're faced with the quick connection screen. I just want to connect to my local box, so I'm just going to leave this as localhost and click connect. And now we can see that the terminal is connected to my local box. If I want to open up the quick connection box again, I can just come up here and click on quick connection. And here I can change what I want to connect to. If I want to open a new tab, I'll just click connect again. And here we can see that I now have two tabs open. If I come down and click on this local shell button, we can see that we get a message that we're about to edit our session profile. We'll click OK. And now we can see that we can change a lot of settings with this session and ZOC in general. There are a lot of options here. And to be honest, a lot of this is over my head, but this seems like it would be very useful for someone like a network administrator. I think it would be great for connecting to multiple servers or computers at the same time and running commands. I do think it's a little pricey in that it comes in at around $80. Number two on our list is Kitty. The creator of Kitty states that this terminal is created for power users and for people that prefer to spend the entire day in the terminal to do all their tasks. This terminal is packed with options and has a keyboard shortcut for everything. Actually, one of the goals is to not have to use the mouse for anything. Everything can be accessed with a keyboard shortcut. So here we are at the Kitty terminal, and the first thing I notice is that the font seems really small, but I'm sure that can be changed. We do have tab support, so if I hit Command T, we can open up a new tab, and you can see the tabs down here at the bottom left corner. If I want to close one of the tabs, it is Command W. To do a split screen, it is Command Return and now we have a split screen. There are lots of customization options, so to access that, just hit Command, Comma, and we get a pop-up of a Vim editor where we can modify all these options. If this seems intimidating, don't worry, there's a document. So we'll come back to the Kitty website, click on Overview, Configuring Kitty, and Kitty Comp. And here we can see all of the options that can be modified in the Kitty configuration file. It's a lot of stuff in here. One of the cool features of Kitty is that you can view the output of any of the last commands in a pager such as less. So for example, if I output this long angular.json file, we can see that it doesn't fit on the screen. If I hit Control Shift G, it opens the output in a less pager. We can also hold down Control Shift and then right click to open that output in a pager. There's also a Kitty shell, which allows you to send commands directly to Kitty itself. So to access that, hit Control Shift Escape. We'll type in help. And here are the list of commands that you can send to Kitty itself. There's quite a bit of stuff in here as well. More functionality can be added to Kitty by writing what's called kittens. So for example, one of the kittens that comes with Kitty is called iCat, which allows you to view images and GIFs right in the terminal. So let's see that in action. Pretty neat, right? Another kitten that comes bundled in is kitten themes. So kitten themes, and that allows you to choose different themes for kitty. There's really just way too many options to go over in this video for kitty, but overall it's a very powerful terminal and gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of customization and automation. Number three on our list is iTerm. This is the terminal I've been using for quite some time now. And as always, I'll be leaving links to all these terminals down in the description below. So when you open up iTerm, it looks just like most other terminal emulators and it features things like tabs, so Command T for a new tab and split panes. So for example, if I wanna split vertically, it's Command D. And if I wanna split horizontally, it's Command Shift D. I use this feature a lot to quickly run other commands. If I hit Command Comma, I get the Preferences window. And here we can see that there are a lot of options to change as well. One thing that's a little bit disappointing about iTerm is while although you can change all of the colors in iTerm, there's no real built-in themes per se that you can choose from. Number four on our list is HyperJS. Unlike some of the others on this list, Hyper is an electron-based terminal, which means it's built on HTML 
CSS, and JavaScript. We can also see it has this very unique look to it with this deep black background. Just like all the other terminals, Hopper can do tabs with Command T and split panes with Command D and Shift D. The settings for Hopper.js is a JavaScript file. And to view that, just hit Command comma. And here we can see that the JavaScript file is opened up in Google Chrome so that you can view it. If you want to modify your settings, you need to open up the .hopper.js file in your user directory. Hopper can be extended with NPM packages that are built for Hopper. This includes themes and plugins. So let's try adding a new theme. To do that, just type in Hopper I for install and the name of the theme. So hopper git hub dash dart dash dimmed and here we can see that the theme was installed successfully if i want to list out the available plugins i can type in hopper space ls r and here we can see there are a ton of plugins to install let's try installing one we're going to type in hopper i for install hopper dash letters and after this plugin is installed we need to restart hopper so this plugin makes letters drop in your terminal as you type them so let's check that out We'll type in ls. Pretty cool, right? There are other more useful plugins that you can install as well. And last on our list is Warp. This terminal emulator has AI built right into the terminal. When you open the terminal up, you'll see a sign up screen. You'll have to sign up in order to use this terminal. This terminal does have a paid option, which is a monthly subscription. And the way this works is with this terminal, you can send up to 20 AI requests per day on their free plan. If you need to send more than that, then you'll have to pay $12 per member per month, which gives you 100 requests per user per day. So the first thing you'll notice when you open up the Warp Terminal is that it looks very different than other terminals. We can still come down here and type in commands, but we can also ask AI for help. One of the ways to use this is come up and hit the Warp AI or hit control space and then ask Warp AI how to do something. So for example, how do I undo the most recent commits in Git or write a script to connect to an AWS EC2 instance? I'm just gonna do something really simple here and say, how do I create a new directory? And here we can see that it says use the mkdir command. So if I want to run this command in the terminal, I'll just click on this little icon here which inserts the code into the terminal input. So we'll click that and we can see that it has an argument of directory name. So I'm just gonna say new underscore directory and hit enter. And now if I run LS, I can see the new directory. Now let's try removing that directory. So RM M new directory. And we see that we get an error. So I'm not really sure how to fix this. So I'm gonna ask warp AI. And we can see that it says, I ran the command rm new underscore directory and got the following output. How do I fix this? So we'll hit enter and I get a message back that tells me I really just need to use the dash r option when I run this. So let's insert that code into the terminal. The other way to do that is to click on the command and hit command enter. And then I'll say new directory enter. And now the directory is gone. I can see where this would be very useful for new terminal users that are just getting started or doing something beyond their skill set. Another cool thing built into Warp is workflows. There are a couple of starter workflows already here, but let's create our own. We'll hit the plus sign and say new workflow. I want this workflow to create a new directory, so I'm just going to type in the command mkdir space new underscore directory. And now I can use AI to generate the title, descriptions, and parameters. So let's try that out. We'll click autofill, and now we can see that we have a title a description and the new directory has now become an argument called directory name which is the name of the new directory that's pretty cool we'll hit save and try that out we'll double click on it and type in our new directory we can also see that warp has tabs and split panes using command d and command shift d warp also has a command palette built in you can access that with command p and here we can see that we can search for commands Let's search for theme and we can open up the theme picker and here we can choose from various themes that warp has pre-installed overall i think warp is bringing a lot of game-changing features to the terminal let me know in the comments below what you think and that's all for this week's video leave a comment down below and let me know which terminal you'll be using if you found this content helpful check out this other video where i show you how to customize your terminals prompt
Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.